Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to all visitors and members alike uh, to Zion on this beautiful Sunday morning. Is there any announcements for the congregation? Anthony? Well, good morning, everyone. I have a couple of things. First off, if you look in your bulletin, there is an insert that we put in there today, and this is the uh, mission moment from uh, Bryce Farmwalt. He's the uh, director of mission growth for our Texas district, and uh, we had invited him to come visit with us uh, next Sunday. He will be here. He will uh, preach for us and then lead a workshop following the worship service, which we will have in the fellowship hall. Uh, everyone is invited. I encourage you to attend. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit, probably, about what he speaks to in this, uh, this mission moment. And uh, uh, we feel it's important that we kind of get a handle on how we can reach out to the community. And that's what uh, his workshop will focus on. So. Uh, really, I hope that uh, we can all take time to uh, participate in that. If you are going to come, uh, we're going to provide sandwiches so we can do a quick lunch right away. But if you're going to come, then maybe if you want to bring some chips or a little dessert, you're w certainly welcome to do that. Uh, the second thing is, is that uh, this week we uh, purchased uh, two partitions to be used in the youth building so that we can divide that big room up into spaces for classrooms so that uh, for our Sunday school opening, they have a section to use for that and then two areas to have uh, separate classrooms. So these are uh, fold-up partitions. They'll fold up into fairly compact and it can be put into the corner out of the way so we can use the entire space for whatever event we may want to do. So. Uh, that did cost a little over $4,000. I will say though that we've had a, some very generous members so far that have contributed to about two thirds of that cost so far. So if anyone else would be, uh, wants to help step up and cover that, we certainly would appreciate it. So that's that. And I don't know anything else. Thank you. Anthony? Portions of uh, bags, the uh, collar for the uh, also will stay next week, uh, Sunday. Um, 
somebody has called me today, I'll take them at, uh, at the church service and put them uh, with others uh, so uh, they'll all be together. Uh, I want to invite everybody here or whoever you know to, to come on Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to have a time change that morning. So I'm thinking around 8 o'clock we'll, we'll start filling the bags with sand which I'll bring and uh, placing the candles in the bags with the sand and putting them on, on the grate. Uh, so we're going to shoot for around 8 o'clock. And the evening when we come to come back to light them, uh, I think we'll gather around 5 o'clock and just we want to sort of set the uh, candles to be lit about 30 minutes probably before sundown. So that's going to be a little harder to call. But uh, we'll get it done. Anybody that wants to attend is more than welcome. Just bring a lighter, a uh, steak lighter that you can reach down in the bag uh, to light each candle. And once again, thank you so very much for everybody that took the candles, the, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the bags. Uh, I greatly appreciate that. Anyway, hope to see you all next Sunday morning uh, at 8 o'clock for everyone else to be out. Thank you. November the 13th, we will be having a children-led service. And I think this is the first one that we've had, so we'd like everyone to show up. Um, there will be a spaghetti lunch after the service, and um, we are asking people to bring spaghetti sauce. I think um, we've already made that announcement, but uh, there will be a lunch after the service as well. So everybody, please come. Is there any other announcements for the congregation? Okay, I really, everything that was uh, coming up pretty much has been announced. Is there anybody else at all? Okay, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, that's a wedding service, that's right. Okay, let's stand and greet one another. Get some more. <laughs> It is the Holy Spirit that calls us together as the people of God. Let's observe a moment of silence now as we prepare our hearts for, for what we're for worship today. Amen. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people joyfully say, Amen. Amen. We sing Amazing Grace.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let's acknowledge our shortcomings, our sins in loving this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we, we confess, confess that sin still has a hold on us, and we have harmed your good creation. creation. We, we have failed to do justice, love, and kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now, journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From the, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. God, gracious and benevolent. Through your Son, you invite all the world to a meal of mercy. Grant that we may eagerly follow his call and bring us with all your saints into your life of justice and of joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. 
The first reading is recorded in Jeremiah 31, 30, verses 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to, the, to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write, in, write it on their hearts. And I, will be their, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. We will now read Psalm 46 responsibly. <laughs> God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though its waters roar and be troubled, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. God shall save her. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So Come, behold the works of the Lord. Who has made desolations in the earth? He makes the cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord our Moses is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The second reading is recorded in Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we, that whatever, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction for all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as gifted. Through the redemption that is in Christ, in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a, prop, as a prop, propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had, a, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus, then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by a law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Here ends the reading. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Amen. 
So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We want to invite Ms. Myra and our children to come up here, please. Come on down. Good morning. I was on vacation and I missed y'all. Well, hi. Sneaking in. Well, today we are going to talk about special people. Special people. <laughs> so uh, let's see. People who are having birthdays this week, anybody? Anybody? Oh, cool. Okay, Pearl, you're going to have a birthday. You are special. Let me give you a sticker. And you're going to have a birthday this coming month? 17. Oh, here, let me find. Oh, this one's perfect for you. Perfect sticker. And you're having one next month? After Halloween. All right. And you're having one after Halloween? Oh. So let's give everybody a round of applause. Y'all are special. Y'all are special. Okay, so um, my calendar says anybody wearing a green shirt this today is very special. Anybody? Anybody? Green? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> You're special, Leah. Round of applause. Yeah, yeah. And um, let's see, uh, oh, I know, this one's, I really like this one. Uh, it's also if you have short hair day. Anybody got short hair? Short hair? Uh-huh, short hair? Okay, so. I like it. I like it. You get another one. Man, you are special. Rock, you got short hair. Abby, you got kind of short hair. Short, short, oh. Ooh, this one looks cute for you. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. So, y'all are special. Let's give a round of applause. Round, around, around, around of applause. Uh huh. Okay, so that's it. So, some of you are special and some are not. Yeah, that just doesn't sound right, does it? No, uh uh. Yeah, <laughs> it just plain mean, right? That's right. Well, one of Jesus' disciples, uh, Paul, he kind of had this same problem in one of his churches where some people thought they were more special than others. You've been reading about that? Okay. And um, so anyway, what Paul told them that uh, he said, so you should know that the true children of Abraham are those who have faith. Not just because you're... Uh, one of uh, Abraham's children. It's all who have faith. So he's meaning everybody is special. So all people who love and trust God are special. And God has given each of y'all different talents that makes you special. Um, let's see. What are some of y'all's talents? Flexibility. Hunting and baseball. 
think you got a good good one, Maria. Playing the piano. Yes, pretty talented at that, Abby. Running. Uh-huh. All right. So see, everybody's got different talents. But what makes all of us special is that Jesus loves us all. And that means each one of you is very, very special. So everybody gets a sticker. Okay, who didn't get one? You want to pick one? Want to pick one? Oh, that's a cute one. That's a good dress. Okay. So you are all special. Let's all give these kids a round of applause. They are very special to us. Woo! All right. All right. Did y'all like a treat today? I restockpiled it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be digging around. There's all kinds. Oh, battery. No, you can't eat the battery. <laughs> no, no battery eating. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Myra. Here, hurry, just grab one. Oh, another battery. Hold your hands and bow your heads when I pray my pulpit prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You know, today's text was strategic for the reformers of over 500 years ago. The question is, though, how does their understanding of this text speak to us today in the year of our Lord, 2022? Now, I think we all can agree that this generation brings different questions than those that were brought by Luther and all of his cohorts back then. Yet, there is a need, a need to bring the biblical text into context with today, Scripture, is above all important. But we should not allow our concern to be relevant to drown out the voices, the voice of the apostles. So, on this special day that we celebrate Lutheran's heritage, the all-important gospel message of justification by faith alone, grace alone, and scripture alone, all the reformers with Paul, the apostle, maintain that the gospel is apart from the law. And God gives it to us. It is grace apart from the law, not mingled together with the law, thereby watering both of them down. No. Constantly the picture is sin, judgment, that's the law, then sacrifice and release, and that's the gospel. I can remember my freshman year at Concordia University in Austin, it was Concordia College back then, and I took a course called Intro to Psychology. Some of you probably remember that in your college studies. That course introduced Pablo's dog, an experiment into a dog's eating habits. Now Pablo, he discovered conditioned response. God, in the Old Testament, starting in the Old Testament, by conditioned response, taught us that sin brings judgment. And it demands sacrifice. And it is offered in faith. And that brings release. Law and gospel. All righteousness comes from God. Amen? What is our problem? Well, it's not that we don't have enough of God's righteousness. We may have the wrong kind 
of righteousness. We want to make it. We want to have it come from us, from within us, to pull ourselves up by the bootstrap. It is not, not given for us as it really is. And that's what it is. It's given for each one of us because of our sinful condition and God's love for us. Period. And it's a divine righteousness. It is given by God as gift. Why? Because it is needed to, to bring us back into relationship with our God and Father. And we tend to strive for a human righteousness still. But yet, God's righteousness is apart from the law, from us doing this and that and jumping through hoops to try to get right with God. And it is given to God and given, it is given by God to believers. Jesus Christ is the one and only Savior. And this gospel, it's for sinners. All sin, all sin, we have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. That's the Reformation proclamation. We all fall short and we are in desperate need, desperate need of this gospel. And it's the good news. The gospel is the good news. It's the justifying gospel and it's for sinners. You and me and all who fall short of the glory of God. <coughs> and we are separated from God by that sin. But Christ has brought us back from our sinful condition with his own life and his own sufferings and his own death and his own resurrection. He paid a very high price so that we can never be reclaimed by sin again. Jesus Christ provided that redemption so that we might come to God. Amen. In providing this free gift of salvation, God purposely demonstrated for us his justice as well as his grace. And God can be just in himself. Why? Because of his holiness. He's perfect. He's sinless. And God can be justifier because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And at the cross of Jesus Christ, God's love and his justice came together. And it purposely demonstrated for you and for me and the world his love for us. And our response is very simple. Believe. Jesus Christ as your one and only Savior. What is the Reformation understanding of the justification of, by faith in the one true God? All sinners, you and me, are just that, sinners. We must, we must trust in what Jesus has done for us on that cross of Calvary. And by trusting in his suffering, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and his exaltation, we come to know that God accepts us, and he receives us. And the need of acceptance and belonging is just as pressing today in 2022 as it was back in the 16th century for all of those reformers and all the people back then. The reminder of the reformers proclamation for us can be relevant yet in this God-centered word to our hurting in this world and our needs for today our need of a divine forgiveness a divine righteousness and a divine acceptance I want to close here with the words of hymn number 294 in our LBW it's from a wonder very wonderful hymn wonderful words. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, did we dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God Help me when you join me. Amen. Amen. And may the peace.
peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in faith in Christ Jesus. We stand to sing the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress. confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the Church. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Keep your church steadfast in your word, reforming God. Deepen our faith and increase our love in Jesus' name. Further further, 
further ecumenical dialogue and partnerships and equip us for unified witness and service in the word in the world hear us O oh god come to the aid of the poor especially those suffering food and water shortages or loss of homes due to natural disasters temper the use of earth's resources and lead us to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. Hear us, O Lord. Guide leaders of all nations, almighty God. Heal divisions, build trust, and remove barriers that prevent collaboration and cooperation. Bring neighborhoods, cities, and countries together to work for the common good. Hear us, O God. Save the trouble those save from trouble those who struggle with hunger, homelessness, or addiction. Strengthen the overworked and give hope to those who do not have enough work. Console those who are burdened by illness or grief. Hear us, O oh God. Reveal yourself to all who seek you. Empower the hospitality ministries of this congregation to welcome those to your feast of love. Foster generosity in our stewardship ministries to both our congregation and community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and thanks and praise for everything that you have provided us. We pray that you would attend to the prayer requests that we have listed today and those that we hold in our heart as we observe a short moment of silence to lift those to you, up to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, a special request for Renee Smee-Hallenbeck. She has been diagnosed with RSV and she seems to be getting worse and we pray for her swift recovery. Lord, be with Renee Smee during this time. Comfort her with your presence. Bring her your healing hand. Be with her mother Sue also too and sister Cheyenne as they try to help her and just uh, also pray for her. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are worried about the effects of this extended drought that we're in. And we come to you because you are bountiful and merciful to your creation. We realize the limitations of our own technology and acknowledge that you are all powerful. You are able to provide rain in abundance. You teach us in your word that the fervent prayers of righteous people prevail with you. So we ask that you forgive us of our disregard of your laws and your will. We earnestly pray in the name of Jesus that you would intervene and send us the life-giving rains. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Gather the faithful at the table of your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who have witnessed to your gracious presence especially on this day, Martin Luther and all who strive to reform and renew the church. Hear us, O oh God. And with grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We receive our offering for the work of our Lord's kingdom.
please stand as you're able. We sing the offertory. <laughs> Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Let's now join our hands together as we pray the perfect prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We sing the, thank, the, thank, the great thanksgiving. The, the, the Lord be with you. It is right and salutary to give thanks to the Lord our God as we on this day come to him with our praise, with our prayers, and with our confidence in him. And now we praise, continue to praise his name as we join in this unending hymn. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament, given and shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. We'll commune the celebrants and then follow the usher's directions for continuous communion. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. Take and eat. 
the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, freely given and shed. <laughs> Take and drink. Take and drink. The true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, freely given and shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. table is prepared. Come to the Lord's table. <coughs>
Congregation will please stand as you're able. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart now in joy and in peace. Amen. We sing the post communion canticle. the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. And all of God's people boldly say, Amen. Amen. We sing the doxology. serve him who first served us and all of God's people say a wonderful voice loudly. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 